Welcome to our signature event for our long COVID research policy and economic impact series. My name is Emily Taylor. I'm the Vice President of Advocacy and Engagement for the Solve Long COVID Initiative and Solve ME. I'll be your MC for today's conference. Um, and uh, the Solve Long COVID Initiative is so proud to partner with the Global Interdependence Center as a continued part of this series going on for the whole course of 2022. As a reminder to everyone here, this is event will speaker, feature speakers both in person and virtually through video conferencing, welcoming folks from all around the country with the miracles of modern technology. Um, we're also to provide, happy to provide a patient rest area, which is located in the Manhattan room on the 12th floor. This is a quiet space for any patients or anyone else who may need to step away for a flare up or sensory overload. Um, there's chairs and an outdoor patio and a water available as well. Um, you may notice that there are index cards on your table. We'll be using index cards for questions. So if you have a question during the panel, feel free to write it down and I'll collect it and um, pass it along to the speakers. Also an important housekeeping item, restrooms are just out the door to the left. Um, you'll see both of them there. And um, just so we are requiring masks at this event, but feel free to remove them while you're actively eating or drinking. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our speakers today. Uh, for joining us for all of your important work and exploring disabling long COVID. With that, it's my please join me in welcoming Ovid Amate, the Executive Director of the Solve Long COVID Initiative, and Bill Kennedy, Board Chair for the Global Interdependence Center. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to, uh, to be here and see you uh, in, uh, in person. And, uh, you know, I was uh, thinking about uh, coming here and, uh, you know, what is the, the risk and benefit of having an in-person event these days? And, um, you know, we all recognize that there is an increased risk by getting people together. But at the same time, I have to say that even the few minutes uh, before the, the start of this event, um, already indicating to me that there's so much value in coming together, particularly as we bring people from different disciplines, different perspectives. And that's really the, uh, the, main, uh, the main focus of our event uh, um, today. Um, we started as an organization um, to be concerned about long COVID um, back in the, uh, at the summer of 2020. So very, very uh, soon after the, uh, the beginning of the COVID-19 global pandemic, um, our community, which uh, has been uh, affected by post-infection diseases um, previously, had the sensitivity and the concern that uh, this may happen with COVID-19. And so uh, already in the, uh, in the summer of, uh, of 2020, we started to work with, uh, with Congress, advocating for more resources to be directed uh, to address that emerging, uh, that emerging concern. Um, there was a, uh, a House resolution, so a bill that was introduced by Representative Jamie Raskin that was called the Long Haulers um, Act, and it was also aimed at understanding um, populations uh, with other post-infection diseases like myalgic encephalomyelitis already at that time. So we felt that uh, there has to be a bridge between what we know and uh, what we didn't know um, at the time and what was still emerging. And we felt that our organization uh, was compelled to be this bridge because of what we know, uh, what we know from the past and what we could see uh, unfolding uh, in front of us. I got to, uh, to know uh, the GIC through David Kotok. Um, so about a year ago, uh, when we started to see uh, some of the, uh, the numbers or we started to be concerned about the number of people who are not getting back to where they were before they, uh, they had um, the, the COVID-19 infection. Um, I was very interested to see if, if we can get a sense of what, uh, what the impact may be um, from, a, from an economical perspective. Obviously, there's a lot of personal suffering, um, but what do, we, uh, what do we know about the impact of that on, on the society as a whole? And there was really nothing that was written uh, in the... Uh, um, uh, in the financial media or anything like that. And then I saw uh, David Kotok's uh, writing about that. And so we got in touch and we started to talk about the need for different communities, um, different disciplines, different perspectives to, uh, uh, to, be, to be aware of what, uh, what is happening. 
And that's how we, uh, how we got together. And uh, we felt that uh, the two organizations, uh, the GIC and uh, Bill, thank you for being a partner in this, um, and, and Solve ME, could really uh, uh, serve, um, uh, but really serve the uh, um, uh, the community by by bringing people together to uh, to have a greater awareness and uh, and really break those uh, those silos those uh, um, those ways that we tend to uh, to see uh, a challenge from only from uh, from one perspective. So uh, we uh, uh, we have very different communities that uh, or constituents that we had in the past, and this is really an opportunity to to bridge that. So I'm delighted that we're able to uh, to do that. Um, the topic of, of today is long COVID, um, which is in itself a very broad term. And I think that um, the speakers today will speak to that from different, uh, different perspectives. And I think uh, we're still using this term in a very, very broad sense. And it can encompass anything from um, people who are severely uh, affected uh, during their acute uh, disease, they were hospitalized, and they are recovering from uh, from uh, from that, uh, and that may uh, may take a long time. Um, we're talking about uh, uh, people who had very mild symptoms initially, but they continue to uh, um, uh, to struggle. So it's a very broad term. Um, I think that uh, we're going to use different definitions, and uh, the speakers will probably help all of us understand what do they mean uh, when they say long COVID. Um, it's going to have a very different uh, definition uh, for a clinician. It's going to have a different definition for a clinical researcher. It's definitely going to have a different definition from a legal perspective if someone is uh, looking for disability. So all those perspectives will be uh, discussed today. And I hope that we can find the common denominator to understand uh, that we need to address this challenge in a multifaceted way. I do want to uh, uh, just start today with reading the, uh, the World Health Organization definition of uh, what, uh, what they define as post-COVID-19 condition, which the World, Health, the World Health Organization describes as a condition that uh, occurs in individuals with a history of probable or confirmed SARS-CoV-2 uh, uh, um, uh, infection. And the reason that the World Health Organization is using this at the beginning of the definition is that there are many people who do not have a confirmed uh, PCR test that their disease really started with an acute infection. So I think we need to recognize that um, relying on a, you know, on, on a single test like that to document whether someone uh, is really having long COVID or not is problematic. And therefore the, uh, the, World, the World Health Organization uh, accepts that uh, there is a probable history of a probable infection. So that's important to recognize. Uh, there are a lot of people who do not have this confirmation. Um, and then they go on to say that it usually takes uh, three months from the onset of COVID-19, and the symptoms can last uh, for at least two months. Um, and, can be, uh, and they cannot be explained by other diagnoses. So that's an, another important aspect of, of this definition. Uh, people who have a, now a, a lung injury or a kidney injury that is documented, and well, that explains some of the symptoms that is really not what uh, World Health Organization defines as uh, post-COVID. This is a different, uh, this is a different disease, and of course, that's the challenge. We don't have a different uh, diagnosis, and so um, what is it? So the definition says that the common symptoms are fatigue. That's the number one uh, uh, symptom that people talk about. Shortness of breath and cognitive dysfunction, which a lot of people uh, in real life describe as brain fog. And, uh, but there can also be other, um, other symptoms and generally uh, um, they have an impact on, some, on someone's uh, everyday functioning. So that's an important aspect of long COVID. It does have a great impact on how people uh, go on with their normal life. The symptoms may, uh, may be new onset following the initial infection, um, or they could be, uh, um, um, uh, or, or they could be a, a continuation of, of the acute infection. And, um, and the symptoms may also fluctuate or relapse over time. So that's another dimension that we're gonna be talking about today. This is not a constant uh, condition, it changes. So all of those are obviously challenges. Um, we're gonna talk about uh, different aspects of that today. 
Um, but before uh, we start the program, I wanted uh, really to, uh, to thank all of the participants, uh, uh, the speakers, and also special thank you um, to our um, uh, sponsors, our tech sponsors, Responsum Health, uh, who enables us to, uh, to have uh, the event be streamed uh, so that um, people with uh, long COVID or other post-infection diseases can join us uh, remotely. So we appreciate uh, uh, your support. And, um, um, and I also uh, uh, wanted to, uh, to really uh, thank the GIC uh, for this partnership in, uh, in having this event. I uh, wish all of you uh, a, a productive day. And uh, Bill, if I may invite you to uh, uh, make your comments. Thank you very much. Well, good morning and welcome to everyone here at the New York Athletic Club. And for all of the, you joining virtually, we welcome you uh, as well. For 46 years, the Global Interdependence Center, which is also known as the GIC, has served as a global leader influencing policies for the greater good. And this has come together through cooperative engagement with decision makers and diverse thought leaders, not just in the US, but around the world. Our mission at GIC is to explore globally interdependent issues that impact not just the world economies, but also our quality of life. And we can't think of a more important issue than long COVID and how that is going to impact economies and the quality of life going forward. Our organization has forged over nearly five decades, uh, very strong relationships with policymakers, central bankers, industry leaders, people in academia. And we do so to expand awareness and advance our shared interest and to promote social stewardship. And uh, we always do this through a neutral nonpartisan forum, very much like our uh, event here today. Now, since the onset of the pandemic in 2020, the GIC has made a bit of a pivot uh, where we have expanded our network to include scientists, uh, epidemiologists, uh, biologists, healthcare workers, and health, uh, uh, public health experts to help our members and the general public gain a better understanding of all of the interdependent impacts and influences that are coming from the pandemic and SARS-CoV-2. So on behalf of the GIC board, I want to thank you, Ovid, and your staff for the partnership and collaboration on bringing this together. And I'd also like to thank uh, our GIC board member, uh, David Kotak, who Ovid referenced. Uh, David will be moderating a panel later today, but uh, through David and the Solve Long COVID initiative, we have received very generous financial support to host a, a year-long uh, long COVID program series of which uh, today's program and today's conference is one part. So our objective today is to explore long COVID's impact from multiple perspectives as Ovid talked about. We're gonna talk about scientific research, public health policy, the effect on insurers and pharmaceutical firms, the economic and labor market challenges, and probably the most important out of all of this is the human experience and how this is going to impact potentially the millions of people here in the US and, and around the world. So here's our promise for today's event. Today, you are going to learn something new that you have, have not known previously about long COVID. It will be the case that the examples that you hear, the techniques that uh, are, are being discussed in research papers, some insights and ideas, maybe one, just one of these ideas today is going to make a breakthrough and help to improve the quality of life for someone that you know personally. So that's our promise. You're going to be exposed to many ideas by the end of the day. And our hope is that you'll take these back, this one idea back uh, to your family, to your business, to your community, to your policymakers to try to make a difference. <clears throat> 